Key stakeholders in the People's Democratic Party are exploring all manners of options to try to find a solution to the standoff between the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, and the governor of River State, Yesom Wike. Meetings upon meetings have been held in Nigeria, and many more have also been held in London, United Kingdom, and other European capitals, as the search for rapprochement goes on. Critically, PDP seems to be running out of time to put his house in order for it to be able to mount a meaningful challenge for power in 2023. How does this development rub off on the polity? While it's clear about who is losing from this, the question of who gains from a fractious house in Nigeria's main opposition party remains up in the air. To help us get another perspective on this matter, we have now been joined by Kenny Okolubo, a political analyst, former commissioner, Delta State Oil Producing Area, Areas Development Commission, and Accord Party House of Representatives candidate in Delta State. We shall also touch on the rudimentary needs of governance in Delta State, as well as the, as the factors that may shape the impending transition from Governor Fan Yokoa to a new administration. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Me. It's my pleasure. Good to have you in the studio. Yes. With us. Thank you. I mean, let's start with your own personal, you know, political trajectory. I mean, you declared uh, to run for the House of Reps okay. under the PDP, but now you found yourself oh. in the Accord Party. Yes. Not APC, not mm. Labour, not SDP. Yes. Is there a reason for that? There's actually a history of the Accord Party in Delta State. Uh, they won elections like nine times okay. to the House of Rep, into the House of Assembly. Of course, never to the governorship set, because mm. we don't even have a governorship candidate right now. One of the reasons I decided to stay away from any of the major parties was I believed in the fact that I have been one political analyst and a member of the opposition party that has criticized this government so much. And I had not changed my beliefs about the views I've had about the government and power, which is the ruling party, the APC government. And I didn't want a situation where I would be compromised by the time I joined the party and I would have to change those views. So it was a personal decision for me because I believe running for the elections is representing my people. Uh, we are in a crossroad in Nigeria right now. We're at the point where we need people who can actually go to the uh, National Assembly and uh, impact on the country. Because at the, at the point we are in right now, Nigeria is almost turning into a failed state. And uh, a situation whereby you know who won, the IMF and World Bank have won that look by existential, I mean, Nigeria is facing an existential threat. Uh, he clearly tells you that we're, 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 we need people, we need men and women that can actually sit down now and speak truth to power. That's what I believe. All right. So what are some of the key cardinals of your party and how does this differ from the existing, you know, well, that uh, we have? Accord Party stands for oneness and progress. And the logo of Accord Party is the tomb. And he happens to be number one on the ballot. He believes in the fact that we should have everything done in the proper perspective. Yes, it's a party that you don't think that can challenge for the presidency as it stands right now. I have to be realistic with the structures on ground. Or it's a party that will make a difference. And you know, a couple of other people who are also running on that platform in other states who are even members of the House of Assembly, you know, uh, sorry, National Assembly. And so I, you see the elections of 2023 is going to be more of individuals. It's not, you know, you don't allow independent candidacy right now. In, the electoral act in the constitution. So it's going to be more of people looking at the individuals and not even, the parties are going to be just be more like a vehicle for change. And that's why you see that today, Peter Obi is resonating with the Labour Party. Nobody knew of the Labour Party before Peter Obi. He didn't resonate. It's Peter Obi that is making it resonate. And that's the difference of what we are having right now. So is your focus more long term? Yes, long term. Right. You, just, you just got it right. Yes. And, and you did mention it's a party. You made a statement that stuck. It's a party that will make a difference. Yes. When we say that word difference, what does that mean to well, you? Well, you see, party? one of the problems we've had in the PDP, we've complained about, has been the internal democracy. That's been one thing that's haunted the PDP over the years. Uh, it's been one thing we've always said. I've always said that even when I was in the PDP, I was very voice of errors. At the time, I was a spokesman for the Presidential Campaign Council. I've never hidden the fact that I've condemned the internal democracy in the PDP, the fact that you decide to get candidates who are loyal to you. You don't even want to know if these candidates can resonate with the populace. You don't want to know if these resonate candidates can actually sell, you can sell them to the people, and you just impose them on the people. 
that's one of, and it's not only the PDP. The APC is also very guilty of it. But now that we have beavers, the bimodal voters accreditation system, right. it's going to be very difficult for you to impose such candidates because people are wiser now. Votes are going to be made to count. It's not going to be business as usual. Plus, of course, the electronic transmission of, of results. Which, Certainly, that which, adds to it. I was, I was just, I was just, I was just going to go there. <laughs> because, you know, Beavers helped us. You know, the first test case of Beavers was in Delta, the Isoko by election. That's right. Where PDP won with 6,000 and, and something votes. And APC had 3,000 votes. And then there was no electronic transmission. But by the time we now did the, uh, uh, they had the Edo, Ekiti, Oshun, and a number of elections. We yeah. saw what electronic transmission added to. So you must give INEC kudos now. INEC has given that inspiration for people to now say, look, I can take a chance, I can test my popularity because our votes are actually going to count to a large extent. I mean, not to say that Reagan is going to be entirely eliminated. Yeah. Your, your former party, the PDP, yes. I hope you're still cool with them, even though they oh, are I not, am very, not I am, I, I must be very honest. I won't, de I won't denigrate the PDP at this point in time. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. I'm interested mm. in your views about what is happening uh, within PDP, I will mm. soon get to a Delta state, but, but then at the federal level, yes. uh, PDP has turned to a, a tussle ground yes. between Atiku's camp and Governor Yesom Wiki's camp. Yes. Did, you, did you see that coming when, when it became obvious that oh, Wiki oh, was I, I saw that coming. I've, ha I've had a couple of tapes I put on my social media, on my Twitter handle at Kenyo Kolubo, and it's trended for a while. Mm. And I've also had the ones I put on my Facebook page. Interviews I'd had in the past, I had warned of, I had warned of the fact that Wiki was given this party and was, they were creating, creating a larger than life picture of Governor Wiki. That's as far back as 2016. So I, I predicted what was happening. It was something I had seen coming and it wasn't new to me. I've had interviews and I, I can back up those, those, those facts. You see, when you have given a man so much, you understand, you, you, it's like a case of he who pays the piper dictates the tone. Again, you also cannot blame the fact that uh, Wiki has has gotten this feeling of entitlement because he sees the fact that, okay, maybe in 2015 when uh, the likes of Atiku, the likes of Saraki, the likes of Dogara, the likes of Kwakwansu left the party, he was practically the one that was, you know, not nurturing the party. But, but, but it goes beyond the sentiments at this point in time. Uh, you must face realities. As an analyst, the primaries held yes. and you lost the election. And when you lose the election, it goes to show that, look, a lot of people have lost election. I think we lost election in 1992. Obasanjo almost lost his rerun from the fact that they had to placate the governors. Buhari tried like four times. Now, Wiki has tried once. As painful as it is to mm. him, he lost that election. There was no rigging. It was clear. And so at this material point in time, Wiki must come to terms with the fact, in my own perspective, that you have a governorship candidate that is PDP. You have a house of rep, house of rep candidates that are all PDP, they are all loyal to you. You have not house of assembly candidates that are all PDP, they are all loyal to you. You have signatorial candidates that are all PDP that, that, that are loyal to you. You can't take the risk of negotiating with other parties at this point in time. Because if you negotiate with other parties and you decide to work for another party on February 25th, it will come to haunt you on March 11th, when you have the prize, the biggest prize that you want to keep in Rivers, which is the gubernatorial elections and the house of assembly elections. And if you look at the indices, for example, in Delta, uh, the last elections, PDP got 594,000 votes. APC got 220,000 votes. In Rivers, PDP got 473,000 votes. APC got 150,000 votes. So even Delta did almost 100 and something thousand votes more than Rivers. So this idea of saying that Rivers have so much votes at this material point in time cannot go with these facts I have just laid bare. Mm. And again, that was before Beavers. Yeah. That was before Beavers. It's very important. If you remember in 2015 elections, Rivers had 1,487,000 yes. votes, which reduced to 473,000 four years after. You know what the implications are? Yeah. Delta had 1,211,000 votes, which reduced to 594,000. So what does that tell you? The same APC that had 6,900 votes in Rivers and 4,800 votes in Delta now went up to 220,000 in Delta and 150,000 in rivers. I'm just using this as, a, as, yeah. as an example. Yes. This was without beavers, this was yes. without electronic transmission of results. And if you look at what happened in Port Harcourt yesterday, the labor movement didn't take permission from Wiki before they went on the street. Uh, so it's, you, cannot, you can't even predict what is going to happen. So he's this seeming stretching of these negotiations. 
it's a weekend eventually would come to be hot, I believe. So you round everything mm. up to a sense of entitlement on the part of Wike? Yes, there's the same uh, entitlement on the part of Wike. Don't, don't get me wrong, Wike, Wike did very well at the primaries. For a first timer who is from the South, who was disadvantaged to have Kanu, to have uh, Kanu voted for, for Wike, uh, Gombe voted for Wike. Yeah. It, it's, I, I was a member of the presidential the, the, campaign the council. Southwest voted. Yes, the entire Southwest voted for Wike. So he did very well. But he should drop that feeling of entitlement at this material point in time and look at the larger picture of his party winning. Painful as it was that the chairman of the party, which I blame squarely for setting up a committee to choose a vice president, he didn't have to do that. He was like as if he was working from answer to question. The candidate has every right to choose his vice presidential candidate. And he did that in 2019 when he chose Peter Albi. And so that's, why even, that's even what the Electoral Act you says. Know, requires now. Yeah. And so if you ask me my own opinion, I always thought the candidate wanted Kovno Koa. And so if you had allowed the candidate to choose Kovno Koa without a committee, now these internal wranglings, or uh, I mean, uh, one of the main reasons they're holding on to is that the committee report was not kept to. There wouldn't have been that issue. There wouldn't have been anything for Wiki to hold on to. Because immediately after the primaries, I know Atiku visited Wiki. But who, who stands to lose is Atiku? So the ball, the ball stops at his court now to continue to reach out to Wiki. But there's an extent to which you continue to reach out to someone who is not willing. Do you understand? Yeah. Because the point where you're in London, you are seeing Bola Met Tinubu, the APC candidate. You are seeing Peter B, the Labour candidate. What you, the message you're sending to, uh, to PDP is that, look, I can, I can do without you people. I can decide to, anywhere I swing, it's where I would win. It's, it's going to be very dangerous. Well, well I mean, my, my point is, mm. um, Wike Lule, as you know, you know, the popular thing. It's yes. not easy to, to come out of that thing when, when you fail at a major uh, primary yeah, election. It's like very that. difficult. It's very difficult. Yes. Uh, but then um, I, I think what compounded the problem was the vice presidential. That's exactly what I said. Thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you therefore make of the so-called demands that is, you know, uh, putting forward yeah. to the article campaign? Yeah, and I think I said I will come back mm. in about two weeks time to address that. Part of it is for are you to go mm -hmm. and then for Atiku to commit in writing mm. that he would do only one time? Yes. Are you to go? I agree with that. Uh, even you think the, it should go? Yes. As it's, it was enshrined in our constitution when I was in the PDP. You can't have the chairman of the party from the same zone as a presidential candidate. And now for the first time, we're having elections months and months before yeah. it gets to the actual election date. Usually primaries are done in October, before you know it November, before you know it February, there's elections. So the, the, the take saying that, oh, we should wait until, they should wait until after the elections before are you goes, I don't subscribe to that. If they want peace in the party, the candidate has emerged. They are very credible people from the South that can become the chairman of the party. But the second demand that says they should do only one tenure, oh, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, why would you get a man to put pen to paper that he would only want tenure? It's, it's, not, it's not in your own making to do that. It is for Nigerians to determine. If Atiku wins the election and does very well, will you now tell me that a president that is doing very well, that would have gotten us out of the doldrums that we presently find ourselves, you're going to hamstring him, you're going to force him into saying that, oh, I already have an agreement that I'm going to do one tenure and I'm not going to... When, when Nelson Mandela said he was going to do one tenure, nobody forced him. He decided. It came from yes, him. it came from him. So he decided you don't to see say that, that as a realistic I have to move on. No, 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 no. It's, yeah, a, but, it's uh, a no no for anybody. That's like blackmail. What about on account of age, for example? Atiku will be 76 by the time he's well, I agree. if he wins. If you say age, look at Biden. Biden is 78. Yeah, but he, he, he's, and, many, many and he, he has many made Democrats it, he has, think he that Biden it, shouldn't yeah, run for a He has made it very obvious that he wants to run for a second tenure. I don't think Atiku has shown that he has, he has any problems with his uh, health <laughs> or his physical state. I mean, do you understand? Mm. He's, he looks very cerebral, if you ask me my own candid opinion. So it would be very unfair. We don't know. We don't own life. We don't know what Atiku will be like in that's, the next four correct. years, in that's 2027. Correct. Yes, let Nigerians judge when he gets to that time that, oh, Atiku is not fit enough. We need to vote him out of power. But to say that because you want to support him and you want him to put pen to paper that he would only want tenure, I think that's most unfair. All right, fair enough. All right, let's, nice. let's go to Delta State now. Now, as we approach next year's elections, what would you identify as some of the rudimentary needs of governance within that state? And, of course, some of the factors that could basically shape the impending um, transition from Governor Okoa to a new administration. 
Oh, well, you know, I served, in, I served as a commissioner in that state. And I must tell you that from the Buri era to the Odoa era to the Okoa era, you can't fault the fact that there has been progress. There's been a whole lot of progress in Delta State. Uh, yes, Governor Okoa has been a governor of, uh, would I say, he was, a, he was a child of circumstance because uh, as a, the transition of, of 2014, 2015, I know we we're not actually supporting Governor Okoa in the primaries. And uh, I was a member of that government. And, Eventually, he got to win the primary election and won the main election and went on to win a second tenure. But you see, the issue at stake in Delta now that is coming to plague the till end of Governor Coe's uh, regime is a seeming fight within his party, which is the PDP. Uh, there's never been a time when the PDP had no candidate or seemingly has a candidate, but there's a court. And the court will have to and determine the court his fate. Will have to determine his fate because, as it is now, the DVA has been pronounced by the court as a candidate of the party. But there's an appeal pending, and the uh, INEC has decided to say, "Look, we're not publishing any candidates until." Just like what happened in Anambra, if you remember, it was the Supreme Court that determined that it was Soludo. That was when INEC published Soludo. Yes. So that's going to be a, a, a big uh, uh, clog in the wheel of progress because whether you like it or not, that's a distraction on the core and his government, because Okowa right now is the vice presidential candidate of the party. He's going to be talking about campaigning in the entire region, the 36 states of the country. He's going to have his mind focused back in Delta, where he doesn't have a candidate as it is right now, until uh, by INEC, you understand, except the one that has been pronounced by the court of David Edivia, he, he's, he's most likely going to go all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court wouldn't determine this matter until November. And by the time it gets to November, the APC would have made a whole lot of gains, which is the opposition party that is in Delta. Because you know, you'll find out that maybe a lot of people that are sitting on the fence, as it, as it is, will tend to say, oh, I'd rather go with APC since the PDP doesn't seem like they're serious about going into the elections. Except Okoa decides to campaign for the PDP, which of course he has no choice. He has to campaign for PDP without the fact that they'll be silent on the court action. But you can't, you can't be silent on a court action. It's, it's something that is open to the entire public. What's your assessment of his tenure? This is your state you're talking about. So, of course, in terms of people who don't know what, yes. what, what is if happening. If I assess now. a court's tenure, I would not like to. I'll give a court a pass mark. That's, a pass mark? Yes, that's the absolute truth about it. No matter what, what you want to, no matter the perspective you want to look at it from. A court has uh, done a whole lot of jobs that you might not call yeah, star projects. You want to see the flyovers like 12, 13, 14. You don't, you don't see it in Delta. It's only one that Okoa is about to complete now, which is a Coca flyover. But internally, he's... A flyover is a star project? They, 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 they tell me as a star project <laughs> right now. <laughs> you must ask me. That's one of the reasons they call Wiki... But for, uh, uh, what did they call his name? Mr. Project. Mr. Project. Do you understand? It's, been, it's not seen as a start project. He said he did 12 he's, he's done, bridges. He's done nine. Uh, they say he's done do COVID. 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have one that's about to be completed. But yes, there's still a whole, lot of, a whole lot to be done in Delta. But don't forget that four universities were established under Alcoa's regime. That was never done in, in Delta. The airport was established in our time, the government house was built in our time, but he has also built the secretariat. Yes, he could do a whole lot more. But if you look at what work he has done in the internal, when I mean the internal, I'm talking about places like uh, Isoko, uh, places like uh, Ijo areas. Yeah. Do you understand? Although those of us in Ondokwa, we complain that we haven't gotten enough from Ondokwa because he hasn't completed the Penekuku Bridge that he has started. But he has also done a whole lot of internal roads in Ndokwa too, which you cannot also fault. But there's still so much to be done, which is why it's, it's important that whoever he's going to hand over the government to be somebody that shares that passion of continuing on that trajectory, because government is a continuum. But if you take the overall assessment in terms of education, in terms of infrastructural development of, of, the, in, in, of the regions, you just can't uh, uh, say that you would not at least give him a first one. Do you think that um, what he tried to do in installing um, a candidate um, in Sharif yes. uh, was about trying to be his own man and not to be subservient to a godfather perpetually? I spoke with him personally about that, and I actually told him that I, in my own view, I don't think he was right. But I won't tell you the things he told me. That was uh, quite a, pri <laughs> that was a private discussion that, I had, that yeah. I had with him. But I think what he was thinking of was uh, looking beyond. I was, funny enough, I was a, I was a 
delegate to that election, I was an ad hoc delegate to that election as at that time, there were so many intrigues. There were so many intrigues. But if you ask me my personal opinion, if I'm a governor, I would never decide on my successor. I have seen cases where every successor has had issues with their predecessor. Look at Theodore G, look at Oji Zokalu, for example. He was his chief of staff for eight years. Mm. And by the time he became governor, there were parallel lines. I can give you so many examples. Look at Ibano in Enugu with his successor. So I think even, if I'm, even, even Anambra. Even Anambra. So I think the governor, Obiano, and uh, Peter, Peter B did everything to make sure he installed Obiano. And eventually, Obiano will not see eye to eye with Peter B. But, but what do you, you think understand? is responsible for that? Because Ordinarily, one yeah. would expect that, look, I chose a successor, we are probably going to be in tandem. No, what I actually thought Okowa would have done if I were in his shoes, I mean, I'm not in his shoes, would have been, the way Okowa won that election in 2014, he was his own man. Do you understand? I thought he would have also allowed all the candidates to win the elections as their own men, because he struggled to win that election. He fought for that election. Of course, he had the support of maybe Bori and, of course, maybe and others, but... The struggle to win that election should have been one that should have guided him in, in, in thinking about his success. Or so his own struggle, his own story. It mm -hmm. was a miracle that he won that election because I was, a, I was an inside player. Okay, I'm not asking you to, to divulge what you, the discussion you had with um, uh, <laughs> Governor Okoa, uh, but, yes. but, but I'm thinking that maybe he is trying to learn a lesson or two from what has happened between uh, Vice President Yemi Oshibaju mm. and Ashwa Jibola Metinubu is political godfather mm. uh, in the sense that if he becomes the Vice President, if Atiku wins, he, if he's unable to install a successor mm. and then he's still got a powerful godfather while he's a Vice President, he, he, that's, that would be very fleeting. You no, know, but, in, the core I know he was going to become a Vice President. The primaries for the gubernatorial was held before the presidential. Yes. He didn't even know who the presidential candidate was going to be. Yeah. More or less to think that he was going to become the vice president. So I don't think that position was what Okoa was thinking of. Well, maybe you, if you look at the PDP, the PDP is the domineering party in Delta State. Yeah. It's got its structures everywhere. It's, it's no doubt about it. It's a party that has been winning elections since 1999 in Delta State. And... Um, Okwa might have also looked at it that so maybe so those of us, those, those people that are supporting other candidates were some of them that did not want him in 2014. That would have also been, a, that might also have been a factor. You, you understand. But you're not going to push me into that. <laughs> I, I, I won't, I won't where I would like that's to that's push true. you to <laughs> as we round off yes. will mm. be to um, have your thoughts mm. on what you think will determine uh, who emerges the president next year. Yeah. Um, APC will go into that election with 23 states yes. sitting governors um, compared to PDPs. Uh, no, APC will go with 22. With 23? They have 24 already. Only Oshun is out of it. Okay, yeah, Oshun, yes, yes, yes. Oshun yes, yes, so will be out of it. Yes. And then and Peter... Adeleke would have joined. The exactly. Yeah, correct. Peter will be uh, without... Well, don't forget any... that Abga has one state. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. So I I'm saying that do you see APC with an obvious advantage going into that election for Ashwa Jibola. APC, APC, APC had that just, advantage. Just a moment. All right. Because mm. uh, there is a suspicion that uh, the, the, the bulk of the OB vote, as, apart from the youth, will be taken out of the PDP votes. And that, and that might translate to uh, an advantage to APC. Uh, you see, the truth about it is that APC had all the advantages until they went on the Muslim Muslim ticket. <laughs> Once they went on the Muslim Muslim ticket, they shot themselves on the foot. Peter B, my, my fear and worry for Peter B is would he make 25% of 24 states? Without making 25% of 24 states, he would go into a runoff, even if he has the majority of the votes. And if you look at what happened in Dara yesterday, for example, the amount of the campaigns that left the APC to the PDP, you wouldn't believe that was uh, Katsina. Katsina. It's obvious that the, the people in the Northwest are angry with Buhari. They are tired of the insecurity in the region. They've passed the vote of no confidence on him with what happened yesterday in Katsina. That is to Atiku's advantage. And if you look at Kano, Atiku has never won any election. PDP has never won any election in Kano lately. Good luck almost did not make 25%. Atiku barely made 25%. He had 390,000 to 1,400,000 for the APC. So what is, it, what is going to happen is that Kwaku Ansu is not going to help Atiku in, in, in Kano, Obi will help uh, Asiwaju in the southeast, all the votes that would have traditionally gone to PDP, 
And also, Obi was also hot at Tiko in Lagos because all the votes that would have traditionally gone to PDP. So if you look at it, at the bottom line, it still looks like if the PDP puts their house in order, it will be their election to win so because of the mostly Muslim ticket. But you do not wish away the governors that are in charge. Mm -hmm. But for the fact that the, the insecurity uh, in the Northwest, Kaduna everywhere, the effig effigy, effigy of the president was born with yeah. with Uba. You saw that yes. turning on social media yeah. in Kaduna. Why? Because of the insecurity. So even the Muslims are rebelling against the Muslims. So yeah, now you you de decided to instead of you to whip up the sentiments from the Christian community who are not in us, you decide to also say no no to them. Not at this point that we have been divided so much along religious ethnic lines. We've never been this divided as a country. Do you foresee a rerun or a clear winner? In February, I can't predict the OB team. I, I must be very honest. The OB team might force it into a rerun because uh, we, the more you think that OB is going, is, 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 it's more like a social media creation. The more you see it, you know, resonating. But uh, 24th states making making 25 percent in 24th state for mm. the Labour Party, I very much doubt if they can if they can hit that mark. I very much yes. doubt if they can hit we'll that have mark. To wait and see. We just have to wait and see. Yes. Sakeni Okulubu, thank, thank you so you. much you. for joining us today. I wish you the very best with my the pleasure. Accord Party. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.